Hey guys, this is an orange and that's a lemon. So I'm going to talk about me turning in my RV. This is a 2018 that I bought brand new. My whole hope when I bought it was that I wasn't going to have many problems. That's not the case here, so we're definitely going to walk around the RV, kind of go over my first year experience, things that you should watch out for, and I'm for staying tuned till the end. I'm going to give you guys my three best tips to make sure you don't end up in a similar situation. So definitely stay tuned. Here about my three tips. The very first things that I did have an uh, issue with was my TV. So you can see my TV is right there. I've actually lifted it up. And the reason I did that is because when this is actually lower, what it does is it actually rubs on this mattress here. And when the buttons bottom out, what will happen is they'll always be pressed in. And after a few weeks, it basically stops working. So I went ahead and lifted this up. I made it a little custom mount back there you can see that so that's how I got around that the DVD player didn't have any issues with on here and this is a 2017 Sprinter when the power outlets did come loose over here so kind of just hangs out over there I told them about it they refused to really fix it as you guys can see these are my drawers and the drawers I've broken several times. I actually ordered a 10 pack of these receivers here. It's just a really bad design because the particle board that actually hangs on to it just lets go. All of these have been replaced one time. I just kind of gave up on it. So now to keep everything from sliding around, I've kind of bungeed it. So these might be things you can expect. The bathroom area, the cabinet here became loose. The shower leaks in the corner right there. And this is not the main reason for the RV actually getting returned. I'm going to go over that with you guys on what the actual reason for the manufacturer accepting to buy back the vehicle and give me everything minus about $2,400. So make sure that you check the showers as well and that they don't leak. And then back here, this board was uh, definitely peeling off. So they went through and stapled it. A few times so now it's actually sticking in I installed one of those max air covers on here but before that you can see that was actually peeling up right there so less than one years old and the day I bought it that was actually happening so it was started curling up so I got that cover which has made a huge difference and one other thing that I did notice about the RV this little magnetic sensor here that interacts with that sensor this fell off on the side of the freeway as we were driving and the ladder kicked out. Thank God I stopped, I got a band-aid and it came back in and I just left it on. I just got tired of playing mechanic on this RV. I put a little welcome mat here uh, because without this, there's a crazy little hump right here. And this hump can uh, be a little bit of a tripping hazard and this is the area that really gets the most amount of wear and tear. So I wanted to keep that clean. And uh, if you guys haven't checked out my other video, I'll show you guys how to hook up an inverter and not have to rewire everything, which makes it pretty darn easy without having to make any kind of permanent modification. So check that out below if you guys haven't checked that out already. Around the driver's side here where the slide out is, I had to have the slide out repaired one time already. And as you guys can see right there, coming apart again. And if you look down here, it's come off again. I had to request that the actual seal right there be cocked in. It was completely uh, open when I got the RV. I don't know if somebody did a bad job on this or not. So that had to get handled. And this little rubber uh, molding here, that is gonna be coming down again. They already said they replaced it one time horrible design this is the antenna that actually goes on the top up there when it starts swinging back and forth because it's so high up at the top it's a pretty big antenna actually cracked the vent cover on the AC right there a bunch of the latches didn't work so what they did is they actually went ahead and on some of them they had to put longer latches so they actually grabbed it's the lucky guy that had a really bad experience I'm just the lucky guy that had a really bad experience now we're going to go into the real reason why this is getting taken back tomorrow. Here it is guys. When you leave this RV parked 
for three days. You come out here on the third day, you go to start it, normally nothing. You definitely gotta watch out for that on here. I think it has something to do with the stereo here because I'll show you guys right now. It does whatever it wants to do. This whole thing has been jerry-rigged. You can see that this is the way I got it here. Damage all the way around. And you can even see that where they installed the cage, it was just cherry rigged. I bought it because didn't want to have issues, so this is what ended up happening. The AC system, if you turn it on high and it's not at 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock, it will definitely freeze on you. So keep an eye on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis like this. Back to the stereo here. If I signal right, you guys can see I got nothing happening here. If I signal left, all of a sudden, the camera on the side is actually working and sometimes you're driving this will actually start working sometimes the reverse stops working other times it'll work fine so it's just on and off with the stereo and really disappointing and if you guys are encountering a similar issue on your Mercedes Benz because the battery is actually located right underneath here it doesn't come with any floor mats when you buy it so uh, I ordered this myself and underneath here is going to be this battery. You have to remove these Torx uh, bits out of here. I think they're T25 if I'm not mistaken. So you remove that. If you guys get tired of doing it like that, as I did, what you can do is you can come right down here, push this in, and basically detach that. And now you have no more power and your battery will not go dead. So as a last resort, if that's what it comes down to, you guys can can always disconnect the battery like that. I am returning this tomorrow, so this is gonna be somebody else's concern tomorrow and I don't have to keep doing this. And if anybody's actually wondering what my best gas mileage is, I've gone up to 15 miles per gallon. And I think the best speed to actually drive this on from talking to other owners is about 62 miles an hour on cruise control. That definitely was gonna be my highest mileage. And if I'm not using cruise and not paying attention to my speed, my normal miles per gallon are gonna be about 12. I also had a little bad experience with the AC here. When you run the AC for more than a few hours, especially on a hot night, the AC will freeze over and um, you're gonna basically have to thaw it out. Also this trim right here on the slide out got loose really really annoying so whatever little tax they, they use in there definitely went through all the way so not the best quality in the buying process it will make this a lot easier and a lot less painful and a little bit of uh, prevention is gonna give you a big return as far as a better experience and I would love to hear from you guys whether you guys think this is a dealer gone bad or the manufacturer gone bad or a combination of both so leave the comments below and i would love to hear your stories as well have a great day thanks again bye